Solids and liquids, solids and liquids, solids and liquids, solids and liquids, solids and liquids. We're here to teach you about solids and liquids. First, I'm going to tell you about liquids. The particles that make up liquids vibrate and spin when they move from place to place. Particles in a liquid also slide and move past each other when they're moving from place to place. Liquids are far more dense than gases. Take Jason, for example. If I blow on Jason, he's not affected that much. You can't see the actual effects of the gas. But with a liquid, I guess it was just too dense for him. When the pressure increases on a liquid, it has almost no effect. Same is true with solids. That's why solids and liquids are known as condensed states of matter. Glad you asked. The conversion of a liquid to a gas or a vapor. What's evaporation? Glad you asked, Jason. Basically, evaporation is vaporization, but without any heat. Natural. Liquids evaporate faster when heated. This occurs because heat increases kinetic energy of particles. This occurs because there's enough energy to overcome attractive forces, keeping them in a liquid state. You get cooler when you sweat, because water molecules absorb heat from your body and then evaporate the heat off. Vapor pressure is a force of a gas above a liquid. So, if you have a sealed container and it's partially filled with liquid, when the particles above the liquid collide with the walls, that's vapor pressure. Tamara, help me, this water won't boil. I'll tell you why it won't boil, Patrick. Vapor pressure has to equal the pressure of the atmosphere over the water. Oh. So therefore, the vapor pressure that's over this water has to equal the atmospheric pressure. The way you do that is you heat up the water. It makes the vapor pressure more, and thus it equals the atmospheric pressure, which is usually one atmosphere. That's interesting, Tamara. I know. Let's go boil water. All right. Normal boiling point is defined at the boiling point of a liquid at 101.3 kilopascals. And obviously. When the pressure decreases, the normal boiling point decreases as well. And when the pressure increases, so hey. does the boiling point. In a body of water, the water molecules are pulling on each other from every direction, from the bottom and from the side. Since they're pulling on each other, that creates surface tension at the top. Surface tension can only be broken if the mass is greater than the surface tension. That's why Jesus could walk on water. Jesus was a chemist. 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 <laughs> a phase diagram gives the conditions of temperature and pressure at which a substance exists as a solid, liquid, and gas. Look, everybody, that's a phase diagram right there. This shows a phase diagram for water. Each of the three regions represents a pure phase of water. A line that separates any two regions gives the conditions at which those two phases exist in equilibrium. The curving line that separates water's vapor phase from its liquid phase reveals the equilibrium conditions for liquid and vapor. It also illustrates how the vapor pressure of water varies with temperature. Similarly, the other two curving lines gives the conditions for equilibrium between liquid water and ice and between water vapor and ice. A unique feature of the diagram is the point at which all three curves meet. This melting point, called triple point, describes the only set of conditions at which all three phases can exist in equilibrium with one another. For water, the triple point is a temperature of 0 0.016 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 0 0.61 kilopascals. That'd be 0 0.0060 atm. Using the phase diagram, you can determine the changes in a melting point and a boiling point of a substance with changes in external pressure. This shows a pressure of 101.3 kilopascals, or one atmosphere. The normal boiling point of melting point of water at 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius, respectively. Now we'll talk about solids. Now we're going to talk about solids. The difference between solids and liquids is that particles in a solid vibrate and move in a fixed point. They aren't as free to move as 
these particles into liquid. Because of this, solids can't flow. Or feel the shape of their container. Beating a solid causes its particles to vibrate more rapidly as kinetic energy increases. The melting point is the temperature at which a solid turns into a liquid. A crystal is a solid substance in which the atoms, ions, or molecules that make it up are arranged in an orderly repeating three-dimensional pattern called the crystal lattice. Duh! A shape of a crystal depends on the arrangement of its particles. Hey Patrick, run your mouth. The unit cell is a group of particles, smallest group of particles within a crystal, that retain its geometric shape. You heard? Yeah, yeah. There are three types of unit cells that make up a cubic crystal system. This is a simple cubic. This is a body-centered cubic. This is a face-centered cubic. Not all solids are crystalline, though. There are also amorphous solids. These are solids that, in, that lack an internal molecular structure. Some examples are rubber, plastic, and asphalt. So uh, I tried to wash them, but it really didn't work. Well, you should use some Clorox. It always works for me. Okay. I Cloroxed my hair once. Really? How'd it turn out? Well, it wasn't black. So what's an allotrope? I don't, I don't know. My mom knew once, but she's dead. <laughs> I thought it was Hi, kids. It's Firefighter Jim. Do you want to know what an allotrope is? What's an allotrope, Firefighter Jim? It's two or more different molecular forms of the same element in the same physical state. Well, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm here to tell you about the kinetic molecular theory. See, there's four parts of this theory. The first part is that particles have an insignificant volume. The second part is that they're always moving in constant random motion. The third part is each and every particle contains elasticity. And the final part is that in a gas, there are no attractive or repulsive forces. But this isn't true in liquids and solids. an allotrope is? What's an allotrope, Farmer Jim? Well, an allotrope is two or more... <laughs> Why are we friends with any track kids? <laughs> Hi, this is Farmer Jim. I want to die. <laughs> Vapor pressure. <laughs> Vapor pressure. Oh god. I forgot what it was. Hold on. So, if you have a partially filled container and you seal the top, I don't know where I was going with that. And the particles that are in the gas above the liquid collide. So, <laughs> so, if you have a sealed container, <laughs> then do it. I dare you. Double log dare to do it. Then we're going to fail chemistry. We're just going to fail. We're going to fail. 